Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video this morning. I hope you're doing really great and we're going to be looking at quite a bit in this update. So we're going to be focusing on the Pacific for a little bit where there is Hurricane Lydia. So Lydia has strengthened into a hurricane and will be making landfall later today, bringing dangerous conditions to the Mexican coast. We'll also be talking about our Atlantic systems in vests 92 and 93L, as well as what is happening across the Caribbean and the rainfall activity expected today and models are showing something very very interesting that we might want to pay close attention to so let's get kick started with the eastern pacific of course our here zoomed into parts of the gulf the west caribbean and the eastern pacific and there we can see lydia so lydia is approaching the mexican coastline those hurricane warnings those tropical storm warnings and even a hurricane watch are all in effect for some areas just a reminder of them uh, let's go on to the cone for here. So that hurricane warning is highlighted in red. That is in effect for Las Islas de Marias and Playa Perulato Esquinapa. So those areas will be experiencing those hurricane conditions later today. And then for as it relates to the tropical storm warning, that's in blue. That is in effect for Esquinapa to Mazatlan and from Manzanillo to Playa Perula. And hurricane watch is also in effect for Manzanillo to Playa Perula. So that means that even though tropical storm conditions are anticipated within these areas, there might be hurricane conditions because Lydia is expected to strengthen some more up in landfall and could make landfall as a Cat 2 hurricane. So that is forecast as of right now. So I hope that everyone to be affected has been taking the necessary precautions for the system. And if you're wondering about Max, Max has actually dissipated. So just as I was mentioning in yesterday's update about the system rapidly weakening and dissipating after being cut off from its source of fuel and energy. Now we want to hop over into the Atlantic Basin at a wide view this is what is happening there is our disturbance which has not yet developed so it is still producing that area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms as we can see here and some models such as euro not expecting that this will become anything much over the coming days we'll have to wait and see though but uh as we look at the latest update from the NHD, we're still seeing that there's a high 80% chance of formation. So this has not changed for some time now. And actually, this might be something to watch. So uh, we can see here that this general northwestward track is expected. GFS was showing something pretty interesting in yesterday's updates, yesterday's runs. And uh, we actually saw where the model was showing that that area of high pressure would reinforce itself as the system makes its way up to the north west but then for one it's not a strong system and then that high pressure area would steer it more on a westward track and at one point the model is even showing that the system would eventually be dissipating and it would just be an open trough or an open wave uh making its way towards the northeastern islands of the caribbean something a bit similar to what we saw with philippe as it relates to the track so very interesting i thought it was very interesting and we definitely should keep an eye on the system to see what it decides to do over the coming days but there is still a pretty high chance that it will be making its way out to sea and not being a problem for anyone let's head over to the gulf and there you can see 93l so uh, this disturbance is given a low 20 percent chance to develop we might see something try to become of it over the course of the coming days and there's even some model data available for it because it is an invest so that means it's an area of investigation it's being closely watched for development so as it relates to the potential intensity whenever we see these tracks in this green area that is representative of the system achieving or expected to achieve tropical storm status by the model so we're seeing that not a whole lot of models expecting that it will become a tropical storm as it relates to the track we're seeing some pretty solid agreement on the path that the system will take the models are not really all over the place we're seeing this uh track up to the northeast and then moving more on an eastward track so even if this does not materialize into a tropical cyclone it could still bring some impacts to portions of the gulf coast states louisiana mississippi alabama florida and we know that this can result in that stormy weather so that is going to be something to watch out for i want to quickly talk about what is going on across the caribbean and what is expected today before we hop straight into what models are showing for the long term and i want to talk a bit about why the season is not going to just 
be quiet. So I'll be talking about that in a moment. So heading to the Caribbean here, we're seeing that it is pretty dry in the east. Some showers moving in from the uh, main development region. There's also a lot of dry air. So and uh, here we can see it on this map. So in those areas of yellows, oranges, reds, that is indicative of all of that dry air. So uh, in the Western Caribbean, though, there we can see all those thunderstorms associated with the tropical wave moving through. So all this rainfall activity is shifting further west. And let's look at what is expected here so euro is showing that we're gonna see substantial rainfall activity across parts of cuba going to the central maybe even the western part of cuba you will see some showers expected for portions of the central bahamas and the cayman islands so there could be periods of very heavy rain across the cayman islands so if you're there be on the lookout for that if you're going out remember your umbrellas and maybe your jackets your cardigans and in the case of flooded roadways please do not attempt to cross and then across central america we are also seeing the shades of oranges reds which indicate that there could to be a lot of heavy rainfall down in Colombia seeing some of those purples and also the Guyanas will remain hot and dry uh, through today maybe with a pop-up shower or so nothing much of uh, same story as we had to Trinidad maybe some passing showers and even a thunderstorm here or there nothing much uh, and then through most of the lesser entities we're not seeing where much is expected now we want to go ahead and move on to what models have to show very quickly. So we're kickstarting with the GFS. So this is as we're going to be heading into next Monday, the 16th of October. And we can see this is what is expected to be of uh, 92L that is determined out there at the time. However, there is that area of high pressure reinforcing itself, and this is as we head to Thursday of next week, the 19th of October. Take a look at that weakened system. Even seeing a tropical wave approaching the Caribbean, another one behind it, and all that activity in the Western Caribbean. So GFS has been very consistent about seeing development in the Western Caribbean. As we head to Saturday, the 21st of October, two days later, there we see what is left of uh, 92L. So again, in earlier updates, uh, Last evening, GFS was showing that the system would dip further south and make its way closer to the northeastern Caribbean islands. But now, here we're seeing it showing the system a bit further up. But that is going to be a possibility. There we have that tropical wave approaching, trying to develop as it does so. And then eventually, as we head into Monday, the 23rd, going very far out, there is that low pressure area approaching the Caribbean. That is quite interesting. As we head on to the Euro model, this is as we head to Thursday uh, of this week. The 12th of the month there you can see all that activity associated with the gulf disturbance moving through a lot of rainfall for gulf coast states and then that disturbance failing to get itself uh to get itself together and then eventually uh whatever is left of it makes its way up but there's that next tropical wave euro is also showing that there might be a bit of moisture increase in the western caribbean but there's that wave approaching with all that activity another one following behind it going on to the Canadian model. So we're moving on here. So Canadian showing development of 92L and there is that next tropical wave. As we head to Thursday of next week, the 19th, take a look at this. So the Canadian is also expecting that there will be development in the Western Caribbean. There is that uh, system, seemingly a hurricane that the Canadian model is showing in the vicinity of the Cayman Islands. And this is not a guarantee, guys. So uh, there is that tropical wave approaching, another one falling behind in that system out there. As we head to the icon model, the final model we're looking at here, all that activity across the Gulf. And uh, there we can see that system, 92 l trying to get itself together and then eventually as we head to sunday there we can see another system expected to develop behind 92 l or whatever it will be at the time so here we can see models not showing just one or two some even three systems potentially out there so why is there a chance that we could see some more activity across the main development region well that is because of the above average temperatures we know for a fact that it has been very hot this year several records were even broken because of the excessive heat and as we take a look at this map here this is depicting the sea surface temperatures we can see that it is still very warm now at the minimum tropical cyclones would require around 26 degrees celsius there's 30 31 29 degrees in some spots so that is going to be favoring more and more development and 
uh, eventually, though, we will see things calm down. The season will come to its inevitable end, but that's not going to be happening very, very quickly unless、uh, there is a whole plethora of wind shear which prevents development. Because these very warm waters aren't the only factor which contribute to development, and we'll see what eventually decides to take. Place as we're going to be headed into the next week or so, but of course you guys know that I'm on top of everything for you, so I will keep you updated. And that is it for now. I hope you found this video to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond to you once I can. And remember to always be otherwise.